Welcome to the Southern Suburban Backyard Chicken Course. Let's get started. Next, we're gonna talk about our big girls, our laying hens. If you've had your chicks from babies and now they're between four and six months old, they're going to be ready to lay eggs. You'll have to decide when you're ready to move them into the coop. And there's a couple of things you need to consider before you do that. Now you're going to move them on to layer feed. You could choose pellet, you could choose crumble. That would be your choice. Uh, the pellet basically is like little pellets and crumble is very crumbly. We ended up going with pellets because again, it cut down on the mess because chickens scratch. That's their natural instinct is to scratch. So they want to scratch that food and throw it everywhere and crumble usually gets everywhere. <laughs> so the pellet worked best for us, but you could try whatever works for you. Now we've talked about hanging the food in the coop but you do whatever works for your coop. Our run is exposed to the outside, so we don't have a place to put our food outside to keep it out from the weather, so we hang it on the inside. And we hang it just enough for them to be able to get their beak in there and get the food. Otherwise, they're going to flit it out all over the place. This is a small size feeder. There's pretty ones, there's simple ones, there's directions for you to make your own, there's lots of different ways that you can feed your hens. We like to be pretty simple. In the coop you saw a larger one when we had a lot larger birds, more birds. Now we're just down to two so I will be putting this one back in. You can fill it and hang it and then the food comes out here and they get their food. Now, you can decide whether you want to free choice their food, meaning letting them have access to food 24 hours a day, or you could learn to feed them at certain times, whether it's you could do morning and afternoon. When our chicks were growing and when they were laying, we always had free choice for them. We always let them have access to food. Now, if you end up having a rodent problem, then doing feedings might work best to take care of that problem. So those are things and adjustments you'll want to look at when you start feeding your hens out in their coop. Now the water, same thing. Lots of different ways you could water the chickens. For water, we just had these simple plastic waters. Same idea, it's kind of a gravity feed situation. Uh, the way you screw it on lets water flow into the well for them to drink from. Now you're gonna wanna check all these things because this one really is uh, rotted from the top and it's open so it's not gonna work the way it's designed to work. So this one's ready for the trash. So we'll go to this one which is still in good working order. It still looks good. Um, this was down in the garage so I wanna clean this up and I might decide to go back to using this for them. Number one, it helps to keep the water clean. Uh, right now, we're using a bowl. So the bowl does get dirty and you're gonna check it every day. If you have something like this, you might could go one or two days, depending on the time of year and how many hens you have before you're gonna have to refill the water. And you'll know that it'll stay pretty clean. There are a few supplies that I like to keep handy either inside the coop or in a bucket at the house that I can take out to the coop. And number one is some sort of a broom or brush and a dustpan. If you have a small size coop, really this can do a great job for you. I can't get a long handle broom into the coop, so I need something small that I can go in and brush and get out. Using a dustpan helps to kind of scrub and get at those things in the bottom of the coop scoop it all in and then I put this in the compost pile. Uh, compost is another topic that we'll talk about but that's what you can do is scoop that in and get rid of your waste and keep that coop clean depending on how you do your floor. 
Uh, you could do uh, linoleum, which would be a great thing to be able to easily clean the coop. We have just a painted wooden floor, which has been pretty successful so far. You could do a layer method where you could layer it with some type of shavings in the bottom. And that way you could just uh, ruffle it about and then change your shavings about once a week. There's different ways to do that and trial and error is best. You could also put some sort of a poop catcher under the roost. That can work very well at helping to keep the inside of your coop clean. What I have used before are those black mats that are used for shoes at the back door. I put the mat under the roost in the evening and chickens poop a lot while they're sleeping and inside the coop, that's mainly when they're going to be pooping is when they're sleeping. So in the morning when you come out to check the hen, you could just take that pan right out, use this, get rid of the waste, you're good to go for another day. I also like keeping one of these small brushes because I can get in the corners or I can sweep off the top of the food, the top of the water, uh, around the nest if I need to. So these small things are very handy when it comes to coop cleaning. Let's talk a little bit about the extras and the treats, I call them. There's a few things that hens love. Now they love digging around, getting bugs and all different kinds of things in your yard. Worms, bugs, grubs, they are wonderful at pest control in your backyard if you choose to let them free range out in the yard. And they'll find a lot of that also in their run. But there's a few things you can offer to them on a limited or daily basis. Number one is the oyster shell. Now, oyster shell can be a free choice item, or you could give it to them every few days or whatever is recommended. Oyster shell helps to get into their craw. It's like grit when they're eating and it helps to break down their food. So having that oyster shell or rocks, tiny grit rocks is important to them. Now they're gonna find that in nature if they're free ranging in your backyard, especially if you live in the south, we have a lot of sand and small pebbles and that's exactly what they're looking for, that grit. But oyster shell also helps with that and it helps with their calcium absorption when they're laying eggs. So oyster shell might be something that you wanna keep on hand, give your chicks as a free choice or as a feed when you're feeding them. Now next, we like to give ours scratch. And scratch is basically a corn, you know, ground up corn. It might have a few other things in there. And we like to use this when we're training our chickens early on when we want them to come to us. Now they say that chickens can possibly be like dogs. I'm not sure about that. But we have learned that we can train them to come to us when we want. Now, eventually they realize that you're the one that brings them food, so they're probably gonna follow you anywhere. But sometimes if you're trying to get them back in their coop or you need them to come somewhere so you can clean inside the coop, it's good to have a way that they're gonna remember. Now they love the scratch because it's a treat. They don't get it all the time. Now it's not food, it doesn't have all the nutrition that they need, but it's a nice treat for them on occasion. What we trained them on was we trained them with a whistle and then we also trained them for the sound. When they heard that sound, they knew it was treat time and they would come running from wherever they are in the yard. So we never fill this all the way up. We fill it enough. Uh, we've done it in jars, but when you have small kids, it's best not to use glass. Uh, plastic is much better. What you're looking for is that sound. I'm looking because I see them down there, they're listening, they're inside the coop. So scratch is a good thing to use on hand when you're training chickens, training them to come to you for different purposes, uh, training them to be able to pick them up and to be able to look at them and examine them. Now another nice treat to have is mealworms. And mealworms can be a bit expensive and I use them strictly as a reward uh, they don't get it very often. These are freeze-dried mealworms. We'll show you a closer look at that. 
um, exactly what it looks like, kind of nasty worms. <laughs> but they love them. And I use them when I want to be able to pet them and get close to them. I will hand feed them the mealworms. For them, that's a very special treat, so they will definitely come for those. Same idea, you can get that sound. They'll recognize that sound and know it's time for a mealworm treat. Now chickens also love to eat scraps from your kitchen. So remember to save all of your scraps of food from most of what you're eating. You can feed your chickens, which you'll because uh, there are a few things you don't want to feed your hens. So having those hens is a great way to compost. You can give them greens and vegetables and different things like that. That will help cut down on your food expense, give them more nutrients, uh, and great nutrients for the eggs. But be sure to check that list because there's a few things that you don't want your hens to eat. Raising a small flock of backyard hens in your suburban southern backyard is a wonderful experience for the whole family. You can name them and have them as pets. You can also use them to provide food for your table when they're done laying eggs. Most suburban backyard chicken tenders like to use them as pets. I know we have. I'm too tender hearted to send the old ladies to the stew pot. <laughs> Any way you look at it, raising backyard hens can be a great addition if you're trying to be in control of your own food supply no matter where you live. You don't have to have a big backyard to have a small flock that can provide you with food on your table every morning. Raising hens can change your perspective on farm animals and you can actually learn from them too. We have what I call the chicken channel, where we sit on the swing and we watch them peck around. We watch their behaviors and we learn all these different things I never knew about backyard hens. It can change your whole perspective. I hope that you enjoy getting your own small flock of Southern Suburban backyard chickens.